those of our sons and daughters who cannot find understanding in the home, there are a hundred evil substitutes abounding everywhere. And oftentimes, with disastrous results. Blancas, the monster of Piedras Blancas, the world's most shocking monster, stalks its unsuspecting prey, feasts its eyes on the next victim to writhe in its slimy arc. The screen's most nightmarish beast. A claw-fingered, scaly-skinned, half-human crustacean turning a lonely lighthouse village into a frenzied bedlam of blood-curdling horror. Never have you known such cringing terror, such sudden shocks. A girl drawn by love to the forbidden cove of the sea monster, then trapped in a torment of unendurable suspense. in the screen monsterama of a thousand incredible sights and frights. See the movie named the most brain-paralyzing shock story of them all, The Monster of... Our being, to know the master makeup artist's magic, how to make a monster. Broadway's stellar performer Robert H. Harris brings to this theater the most terrifying of men, a man whose mind is distorted by hatred. I'll use the very monsters they mock to bring them to an end. This maniacal strength will linger in your arms and hands. And with it, you'll destroy your real enemies. Exactly as I instruct you. findings, I would say that he was attacked from behind by someone with fiendish strength. So what do we have to do? Look for a monster? We're not talking about actors. We mean a real monster. Behind the scenes in Hollywood's wonderland of make-believe where pretty girls parade their pulchritude, terror stalks with the stealthy steps of death. <laughs> And death following death permeates the very air you breathe with horror. The monster maker of make-believe land sells his talents to the devil. I have a great honor to bestow upon you. I intend to add you two to my collection. You want real heads on your wall? As real as I can get them. See the master monster maker's chamber of horrors. In the 
distance between the Earth and the Moon at its closest proximity is 238,000 miles. We expect to cover this distance in approximately 48 hours. X minus five seconds. Four, three, two, one, zero. minutes before takeoff time in the uninhabited desert of White Sands, New Mexico. Tell them to stand by for count off and firing. 59, 58, 57. But to reach 50. this dramatic moment, we're months of construction, checking every detail a thousand times, and a desperate struggle to convince the skeptical, to outwit those who would stop us, to muster up courage to challenge the black, airless void of terror-stricken space. Come back to me, job. Please, come back. 17, 16, 15. All right, take it away! 18, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, fire! Stuck here. Who got me here? I didn't want to come. You can blame me, Joe. I could have blown my brains out, or gone over Niagara Falls in a barrel, or found some other decent way to die. The picture you've been reading about in every important national magazine and newspaper. Among them, Life, This Week, The New York Times, Popular Science, Seeing Stars, Popular Mechanics, Parade, The New York Daily News. Never before has man been transformed into such hideous proportions. Never have teenage girls been subjected to the terrifying ordeal in the fantastic womb of torture. Prisoners on this island of the mad must fight desperately to preserve a sane and conscious mind. The 
This strange and powerful story has been acclaimed as the most terrifying of all time as it bursts forth the unequaled horror of an island of monsters created by a human beast. simply fantastic. If I hadn't performed the surgery myself, I would never have believed it. What'd you find? Today, the scientific world revealed its most closely guarded secret, the plan for man's first venture into the far reaches of outer space. Within our fuel range are the planets Venus and Mars. One of these should be our destination. And here is the super rocket poised for its historic takeoff. And there it goes, up, up, up into interplanetary space. And at the controls of this sky monster are the greatest scientists of this generation, Abbott and Costello. We're not going to the moon. We're headed for Mars. Who but Bud and Lou could get in such a fix? But first, they make a mess of a secret project. A wreck of the New Orleans Mardi Gras terrorize a city, and even get blamed for a ray gun bank stick-up. Now they're out of this world with laughter on a runaway rocket ship, and their misguided missile finally lands on the manless planet Venus. Manless? Oh, man! We must warn the Queen. Our planet Venus has been invaded. What kind of hot rod was that? We, we want, want a king! We want a king! king! What can a king do that a queen can't do? Be the father of a large family? There's a pack of the planets, riotously lost among acres and acres of gorgeous girls. With Marie Blanchard and the Miss Universe contest winners. I hereby claim Mars in the name of the United States of America. Me too.
gentlemen, my name is Richard Carlson. I'm sure you'd all like to know something about the new entertainment miracle, Third Dimension, what it is, what it does. Well, the best way I can describe it to you is to tell you that it makes the screen absolutely real and alive. People, objects, landscapes take on a depth and a dimension such as they have in real life. And it has an added quality. Objects actually seem to come out of the screen. So real they almost touch you, creating the most dramatic impact that the screen has ever known. Coming to an incredible climax when a molten meteoric spaceship from another planet rushes out of the heavens right at you. Of course, these illustrations are only a pale suggestion of the real thing. It, it can't be described, it's got to be seen and experienced. And I must add that even without 3D, it came from outer space is a picture that you'll long remember for its blending of science and fiction, for its eerie terror, and for its story of an invasion from another planet that's almost beyond imagining. I tell you, from its size and its appearance, this thing came from outer space. I even have reason to believe that there's some form of life in it. What do you want? What are you doing? Let me see you as you really are. cosmic ray, the Earth is invaded by indestructible moon monsters. Their ghastly mission, death for all humans. <laughs> what astounding technical developments are being made to protect mankind. Robot Monster brings you an actual preview of the devastating forces of our future unsuspected revelations of incredible horrors that will terrify you with their brutal reality. There is no escape from me. Very well. I will recalculate. Your death will be indescribable. Fool humans, there is no escape. <laughs> sweeps London from end to end. Even Scotland Yard is baffled. But two men of intrepid daring fight back. It's Abbott and Costello at their hilarious best. Battling fiction's most fearsome themes in Bud Abbott and Lou Costello meet Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Co-starring Boris Karloff as Robert Louis Stevenson's fabulous double demon. Mr. Hyde will kill him. Mr. Hyde will kill him. With Helen Westhoff. Craig Stevens, and Reginald Denny. Hey! Stop this fight! There's ladies present! Bud and Lou are tearing up the town, trapping the beast among a bevy of beauty, adding turmoil to terror in a house of horrors that would frighten even Frankenstein. Come on, where? We can't get a Give me a hand! Come on! And what a riot when they get funny notions from deadly potions. Hey, Slim. Huh. Those guys must be seeing things. Pay no attention to them, they're drunk. You know, there's always a way of... Biggie! <coughs> 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 <coughs>
weapons set to destroy the Earth. The human race lulled into a false sense of security except for one scientist who dared probe the secret of this terrifying plan. They're here, they're here, they're going to destroy us. It's all right, Dr. Martin, you're with friends. You'll be all right. He'll kill everyone. We've got to stop them! Easy, Doug, easy. Who are you? A scientist, like yourself. Where do you come from? From a planet, yet unknown to you. I'm getting out of here. Stay where you are. Dr. Martin. What are you doing with this? Back or I'll kill him. Go on, get back. Do as he says. You'll see an amazing succession of staggering scenes. Strange monsters, giant reptiles, and astounding marvels of science yet unborn. didn't know, but dedicated scientists were willing to risk their lives to find out. This lungfish, the bridge between fish and the land animal. This one was a failure. It hasn't changed in millions of years. But here, here we have a clue to an answer. Starring Richard Carlson, grimly adventuring underwater in the depths of the mighty Amazon. Lovely Julia Adams, her beauty allure even to the man-beast from the dawn of time. Richard Denning, whose scientific passion turned to the fury of revenge. You'll see the most amazing underwater photography that the screen has ever known. In this strangest of all science fiction adventures. Four men dead so far. We are staying until we get, or until somebody else gets killed. for the first time on any stage, the lady and the buzz saw. your bag at the studio and took mine by mistake. Where is it? Oh, Don, I... What's the matter? What have you done with it? I left it in the cab. 
Well, there's nothing to worry about, mister. I gave it to a cop. You gave it to a cop? What was in that bag, Don? It was a head. A human head. Don, Don, what's the matter with you? Don, keep away from me. <laughs> Why don't you laugh now? Who are you? You're not Ross. Good. Yes. It's all right, Don. You don't have to worry about me. I, I would never turn you in. My poor dear Claire. Don't you know I wouldn't dare trust you? the mummy. Don't worry, the mummy will find you. You'll howl as you follow Bud and Lou in a strange land where exotic dancers perform ancient rituals. You'll scream at this mystic world of mad magic and uproarious adventure. Does this mean anything to you? It means death to whoever holds it. <laughs> Starring Bud Abbott and Lou Costello, with sultry Marie Windsor giving you your first look inside Costello. Turn off the light. Let's stop pulling and cut them open. And Peggy King, George Goble's TV girlfriend. You blew in from the Middle West and certainly impressed the population hereabouts. Imagine Lou trying to be charming to a snake. And Bud at the end of his rope. Stop blowing! Your nerves will tangle as they tangle with terror, meddle with murder, ah! and try to elude a curse 4,000 years old. science creates an electronic monster so terrifying, only screams can describe it. Come back home. Come back home. According to the evidence, Hennessy was murdered by a creature with atom rays of superhuman strength and a creature that cannot be killed by bullets. I said I would live to see you die. I just came from the Bureau and checked the murderer's fingerprints. His name is Willard Pierce. They let me have it from the files. And he's theft, fraud, three months in prison, tuberculosis. How could a tubercular man have strength enough to break those bars like that? You think that's something? Answer this one. How could a dead man have strength enough to do it? Fantastic but based on scientific fact. Planes. How low they're flying. You will stop all planes and trucks searching for radioactivity. If you do not, many people will be killed. There will be no other warning. Hello, hello, hello. They hung up before I could put a tracer on it. Slow down, Dave. Dave. Did they? Oh, no. Go out and kill him. No, 
Those are the bodies that were stolen from the morgue. There is no escape. Dean Jagger as Professor Royston, top secret scientist. Science was stunned. The new atomic miracle should have been mankind's greatest boon. Instead, when such power to cause phenomenal growth proved dangerously unstable, man was confronted with his most shocking blunder. The isotope triggered our nutrients into a nightmare. A blunder that transformed a tiny insect into the hundred-foot spider that was now ravaging the panic-stricken countryside. He did not consider a human emotion. No one takes my gun. Tony, look out! He did not know about the uninhibited exhibitionism of a striptease dancer. He'd forgotten about the power of love and knew nothing about the vicious force of jealousy. Nothing ever come easy to me. Don't touch me. I can't stand you. Tony, let the little girl go. But more thrilling, more exciting, more mystifying is the monster. The mutation by atomic energy, part man, part beast, salaciously watching women as they bathe. A monster such as the eyes of man has never before seen. Killing one by one each of the few living men, hunting out the most beautiful of the remaining women to take as his mate. When worlds collide. Written in the stars is a message of doom for this, our world. And now in the most shattering experience the screen has ever given you, Paramount tells what could happen within your lifetime when worlds collide. An astronomer checks and double checks his horrifying discovery. A distant star racing through space toward an inevitable collision planet. The United Nations meet in emergency session. All conflicts pale before this threat from another world. If you wait until the danger is visible to the naked eye, it will be too late to escape. High on a mountaintop, an army of scientists work desperately to build this giant rocket. 
this modern Noah's Ark to carry a few picked survivors of our doomed civilization to a new life on another world, reaching the heights of self-sacrifice, the depths of the animal lust for survival as they fight to be among the few who can be saved. Let's take the ship away from them! Come on! Fighting among themselves, fighting against time, as doomsday is upon them. I think all you scientists are crackpots. Nothing is going to happen. When worlds collide, you'll see the most amazing, awe-inspiring scenes ever put on film. The forces of nature unleashed in all their terrifying force. Tremendous tidal waves smashing New York City. The molten fires from the bowels of the earth gushing out to consume our world. Isolated Pacific Island, the Navy lands a party of daring scientists to solve the mysterious disappearance of an entire atomic research team. Strange horror strikes first at the plane that brought them. And then, earth-shattering tremors begin tearing the island to shreds. Okay, Professor, how are the crabs blowing up the island? I am not sure. But imagine they are able to send out arcs of heat. They are packed with it. They can melt and fuse parts of the campus explode the materials contained, and bring about the slides. There used to be ridges there for maybe two miles. Now there's less than half a city block. Soon we will have nowhere to run. Fathoms deep among the terrors of the mighty Pacific, daring skin divers brave undersea perils that stagger the imagination. Here are monsters with razor-sharp claws that hand grenades and dynamite cannot stop. Nor searing fire and flame. Nor tons of crushing rocks. As mankind faces its last desperate chance. Nine minutes before countdown. Nine minutes. Nine minutes before countdown. Nine minutes while the world waits and wonders. Share, if you dare, the unbearable suspense of men and women who have never in their lives the day the earth caught fire will burn itself into your memory. Is it fiction or is it fact? What's the mutation of the earth? Mutation? Well, it's a flat oscillation on the earth's axis caused by the pull of the sun and the moon it's on changed. the equator. You see, there's a slight bulge on the... There's also something here about axis rotation. There's been 11 degree variation, whatever that may mean. They've shifted the tilt of the Earth. The stupid, crazy, irresponsible bunglers. They've finally done it. From the presses of Fleet Street, today's headlines blaze into tomorrow's history. And here are the people who report the most sensational story a newspaper has ever had to print. A story that might be the last it ever prints. These are the people of Hockey, the girl on the government switchboard, and Stenning, one-time ace reporter, striving to make a comeback in life and love. You happen to walk in at the end of a black Monday. Well, what about a foggy Sunday? Oh, come on now, Pete, we're too old. Oh, not too old. Look, I said you could use the phone oh, and come on now, Jeannie, what do you want? The slow build-up? Hot hands of the movies? Knee troubles in a coffee bar? This is Maguire, the science editor who unearths the deadly facts. What the hell kind of fog only comes up to the fourth floor? Well, I'd know it's better than to come up here. This place is like the anti room to hell. It's really chaos at London Airport, Mr. McGuire. It usually is. Question is, how do we get home tonight? Yes, I know. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> yeah. Countdown must started by now. Think of it. Think how? Twenty-two. 
21. To the luck of the human race. The day the Earth caught fire, fearlessly tackles a ferocious subject. It will seize your imagination, stretch your nerves with suspense more compelling than any you have known in a cinema before. Burn, witch, burn. I want some kind of explanation. But is it obvious? I'm a witch. Can another woman's fiendish jealousy possess and injure her? Don't answer it. Hello. Hang up, Norman! Take me in your arms. Oh, Norman. After you undressed me with your eyes, I'm... conjuring evil spirits to do her sinister bidding. Shocking powers of witchcraft. Powers that can even bring a stone eagle to life. say there are things better left unsolved. Who knows what waits for us in nature's no man's land? Impossible, unbelievable, fantastic. But I tell you, it could happen. It could happen. It could happen. It could happen. Yes, it could happen. For various authorities believe that buried somewhere under the polar ice cap, in a state of suspended animation, are the awesome creatures, the leviathans that roamed the Earth at the dawn of time. And under certain conditions, a nuclear explosion can free one from his icy tomb. Then, guided by instinct, the beast would come back, back to the caverns of the deepest Atlantic where it was spawned, an armored giant wreaking his prehistoric fury on modern man and his puny machines. Cities would be terrorized by the cruel intruder from the past. Populations crazed and panicked with fear by its destructive force. Granite and steel would crumble. Soldiers and their weapons would be powerless before the onslaught of the beast. The beast. The beast. The beast from 20,000 fathoms. Herald Square, 34th Street. Broadway. Every section of the city is guarded. No one knows where the monster will strike next. Another one, Colonel? No. You know where the radioactive isotope is? No, but if it can be loaded, I can fire it. I'll load it. Just remember one thing. This is the only isotope of its kind this side of Oak Ridge, so you can't miss.
story, says H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, and Jules Verne's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea have challenged mankind. So today, man is successfully probing deep into the mysteries of the universe. Can he penetrate the greatest mystery of all, time itself? George Pal and the fabulous production know-how of Metro Goldwyn Mayer to catapult you through time into a world that is yet to be. Why is it that we usually ignore the fourth dimension? You, you see, we can move in the other three. As the doctor said, up, down, forwards, backwards, sideways. But when it comes to time, we are prisoners. Inventor Rod Taylor's breakthrough into the realm of the fourth dimension is defied by his friend Alan Young. If that machine can do what you see it can, Destroy it, George, before it destroys you. Every moment is a year, hurtling through the atomic wars of the future on an incredible excursion into the unknown. What are the people like? Ah, <laughs> the shape of things to come. It's lovely Yvette Mimieux. And what happens when boy meets girl thousands of years hence? How do they wear their hair? Who? The women of your time. Up like that. Show me. Is this the human race of the future? Or is this the Morlocks, fiendish creatures who live in a weird underground world? And the Eloi, the tranquil sunshine people, who the Morlocks dominate and maintain like cattle, luring them below with the hypnotic wail of the sirens to feed upon them in cannibalistic horror. Big as a skyscraper. When he moves, the whole earth quivers and quakes, and an abyss of horror opens up. See these prehistoric beasts emerge from the bowels of the earth after 200 million years to devastate mankind. Supersonic jets cannot catch him. Rockets cannot stop him. Armored tanks are helpless before him. Even guided missiles are powerless. See Rodin destroy a modern city, leveling it to the earth with a killing airstream of his mighty wings. Nothing can stop him. Nothing escapes this monstrous beast of evil. Destruction and darkness come up in creation, and the beast shall reign over the earth. Yes, the earth, the skies above and the seas below, infested by swarms of nightmare creatures, crueler, deadlier than the armored giants of prehistoric eras. Here is a wild, headlong flight into terror, as the desert erupts with a grim battle for survival. Here is a fear-frenzied moment of suspense, 
as mankind totters before a thing that multiplies faster than it can be killed. Here is a desperate plunge into the black depths of the earth, where human courage challenges the brute force, the splashing jaws, the poison fangs that guard the subterranean nest where the beast spawns its terrible progeny. To all units, to all units, condition red, Drain 267 is the target area. Repeat, condition red. Drain 267 is the target area. Is there any type of gas we could use? No, we can't take a chance. It might poison the whole city. Papers and magazines everywhere carried an amazing story. Reporters saw Dr. Manley Hall hypnotize actor Lugosi to give reality to a scene in Black Friday. Horror struck, they witnessed the hypnotized actor's mortal agony as Lugosi actually experienced the terror of suffocating to death in a closet. Let me out, please! I'm suffocating! <laughs> sinister hand of science dares a new and dangerous experiment. Into the body of a gentle scholar is grafted the brain of a criminal, and a new and deadly monster is born to ravage an unsuspecting world. You've been shot. Yeah, fix it up, will you? How'd you get it? The coppers shot me. It's only a scratch. How'd you get it? Well, don't ride me. It's your fault anyway. Fine. Yeah. We'll take the bucks. Go ahead and shoot. If you want to dive 200 feet for it, keep him covered. Exactly as I say. Step down from there. I'd always found that the female of the species was more responsive to electrical impulse than was the male. It's fortunate that we met here. Shall I show you how it was done? upon a night, two wisps of smoke were out on a lark, a witch and her father. Goodbye, father. Goodbye, Jennifer. Be a bad girl. Her first night was a calamity, but she was rescued by a very handsome man. Oh, cold in this tunic. But I have no clothes. No clothes. Now, this little witch was no ordinary witch. Oh, no. She was beautiful and did the strangest thing. But she had a terrible time making the right man fall in love with her. Oh, I'm a pretty good judge of character. And I don't think you're really a, a 
bad go. I guess this will take longer than I planned. It's getting late. But I want you to know what I am. All right. All right, what are you? I'm a witch. Why do you look at me that way? Oh, my dress. Do you like it? I don't know. Such a shock to see you dressed. Indian Island comes a tale of terror and voodoo, of witchcraft and zombies, and all the weird black magic that the white man seldom sees. It is a tale of brother against brother and their love for a woman who lived with the dead. And it is also the tale of a young nurse who never believed such things could happen. <sighs> Tell me that the voodoo priest could cure Mrs. Holland. Better, Doctor. Dambala, this woman is ill. This is the ceremony of voodoo death, a ceremony that seeks the life of the woman who lives forever, who walks with the dead. A man would kill like a leopard and leave the traces of a leopard. Crazy guy. But he'd have to know about leopards. Have access to leopard claws and hair. We're not going to catch a train, darling. We're going to stay right here and catch a murderer. that your childhood could be bright and full of friendliness. But you must promise never to tell anyone about me. Not even Daddy or Mommy? No. This must be a friendship that only we should have. Why, Daddy, you know my friend, too. You couldn't know this woman. She died before you were born. Oliver, please, let's not go on with this. The child's trembling. If that child comes here again, I'll kill her. Yes, I'll kill her. going to repay you for betraying me. 
I'm going to give that brain of yours a new home in the skull of the Frankenstein monster. The uh, juggler vein is severed, not cut, but thrown apart as though by powerful teeth. A werewolf. Last night I killed a man. I didn't know what you were doing. Oh, but I did. I wanted to kill. I think they're after Dracula. to the doctors together. Dig them up. There'll be no digging. The kirkyards are too well guarded. We will, so to speak, burk them. We killed him. We can't be sure of that. I'm sure, and I mean to report it. It's like Burke and Hare all over again. That is, grave robbing is one thing. This is murder. You ordered this subject. Received it here and paid for it. That makes for a part of the murder. You must leave this house. I can't do that. You heard McFarlane. Save yourself, Master Fiddies. Look at McFarlane. Gray, I must be rid of you. You've become a cancer, a malignant evil cancer, rotting my mind. Oh, never get rid of me. centuries, kept alive by the blood of innocent people. When the full moon rises, I turn into a werewolf with only one desire, to kill. I tried to form the miracle of science and failed. My blood is contaminated with the blood of Dracula. <laughs> Piano long silence mysteriously plays again. Its weird and ominous chords filling a bedeviled house put stark terror. A concerto of death, a cobra music of a dead man, played by a hand that returned from the grave to wreak vengeance on his betrayers, marking each for murder as it strikes with inhuman power. A horrifying monster that takes its evil commands from beyond, that cannot return to the tomb till it completes its mission of destruction. Hillary! Listen, listen! Can you hear it? The piano. It's the hand playing. It's the hand. You were right all the time. It was Ingram's hand that committed murder. I heard what they said in the garden. I couldn't help it. It's you... a lie. You're lying. I'm not a liar. But you, you are a coward. You don't want to hear the truth.
find you're not unaware of my position in this house. Well, uh, maybe you can tell us about it. I'm being kept a prisoner here against my will. I'm alone and friendless. They're trying to destroy my mind, Mr. Lee. By innuendo and indirection, they're trying to make me believe I've done something dreadful in the past. Perhaps I can explain, Mr. Lee. We don't believe there's anything wrong with Laura now. But we are sure something will happen to her mind if she continues to live under this strain. Just as I told you, they're behind it. Can't I make that clear to you? They spend all their time trying to terrify me. You have to put the blindfold on, and you will know the truth. No! Count Dracula sleeps in this coffin, but rises every night at sunset. Chick is right. This is awful silly stuff. Come on, take it all out. Wow! Bring out, Chick! Come on! Samantha, come on! Wait a minute! The nation's top comics, Abbott and Costello. Petrified, but hilariously. Stop! Plus the dangerous and terrifying Wolfman, played by Lon Chaney. Plus that fiend out of a nightmare, the vampire Batman, Count Dracula, played by Bela Lugosi. Plus the most dreaded creature of them all, the Frankenstein monster, played by Glenn Strange. Plus a couple of luscious but designing females in the spookiest laugh fest on record. Remember the ghoulish, goose, pimply, gleeful time you had when Abbott and Costello met Frankenstein? Now they're face to face with the king of the killers in the slap-happiest homicide in the history of mystery. This bellboy will commit suicide tonight, and this will be found beside the body. Suicide? I have ways. Bodies? <laughs> The place is loaded with them. And guns. And gals. And gags. And slinky, slithery homicidal suspects. With Abbott and Costello in the middle between the law. And the vengeance of the most ruthless killer of them all. Could you find the bodies in your room? I put them in the elevator. Damn it. I'm not... <laughs> Sensational exploits will startle you, thrill you, electrify you with hair-raising excitement and suspense. See mighty Joe Young as he savagely resists capture in his native Africa. Oh! Joe! Joe! See the most fantastic relationship between beast and beauty. A mere girl mastering a primitive giant. 
the mighty Joe Young, enraged by Hollywood pranksters, destroy Filmland's swankiest nightclub on the fabulous Sunset Strip. Mighty Joe Young, the picture that's alive with the most sensational action thrills ever filmed. Mightier than King Kong, Mighty Joe Young. The two of you are beginning a strange journey. A journey that no Earth people have ever undertaken before. Universal International presents the most startling, the most imaginative and suspenseful science fiction drama ever brought to the screen. You'll marvel at the superior intelligence that unleashes its deadly ray. Dave! Dave! Or can kidnap an airplane in flight. Pulling us up. Prisoners hurtling through endless space, speeding toward the unearthly furies of a planet gone mad. See sights never before dreamed by man. The battle between guided meteors and deadly rays. They're gonna hit us. They're gonna hit us. A planet doomed to destruction. while captive Earth people fight for their lives. It is indeed typical that you Earth people refuse to believe in the superiority of any world but your own. Run, Ruth, run! as a raging monster from the dawn of creation attacks the world of man. Here, gentlemen, is your villa. It would take an enormous number of those to disable a Navy submarine. Or just one of enormous size, Mr. Chase. <laughs> See, they picked an atom sub to go out and fight this thing. Why is that, Commander? Could be because of the new electronic equipment, or her speed. Was she ordered back here from Hawaii just for that? That's right. I think it's as bad as that, do you? I think we're lucky she's here. The H-bomb blasted it loose from the depths of the Pacific. But not even the H-bomb can kill it. Unknown object coming this way. Entering minefield. Stand by, number 38, mine. Fire. under Holocaust as the men and weapons of the atomic age battle to the death against the ageless monster of the deep.
left hand points the way to an experience human eyes have never before seen. Earlier this evening, I saw what looked like a small meteor drop into the desert not far from here. You mean it could have been a spaceship? Robert Clark is the scientist caught between vicious gangsters and the astounding sea monster. Here is a power that frightens the deer in the forest, terrifies fearless dogs, a woman so intriguing that her face and figure fascinate every man, the woman whose warmth consumes. But the astounding she-monster is no more to be feared than beasts of our own underworld. In case you get any more cute ideas, what do I do? If you're not too afraid, make a date with the woman you'll never forget. A woman impervious to bullets. Okay, banga banga. Just when do you talk a native language? I just started today. Well, what'd he say? What'd he say? I don't even know what I said. Do I need you? Oh, my do I, baby? Of course I do. Duke Mitchell and Sammy Petrello turn an island paradise into the zaniest madhouse in the seven seas. Charlita puts a gleam in Duke Mitchell's eyes. Your smile only added life to your mastery. Muriel Landers puts the whammy on Sammy. Sammy! Run for your life! Go on, get out of here, run for your life! Ramona, the romantic chimp, takes off on a romantic chase of her own. Strange. But interesting. Really think so? What a charming compliment. Bella Lugosi finds the perfect subject to turn a gorilla into a goof and versa visa. Well, 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 what, what are you trying to tell me? I, I don't understand a word. Well, what, what, what am I, dumb or something? Uh, don't, don't answer that. Now look, Duke Mitchell. I'm running this game, you understand? And I'll talk back. Yeah, now put it on, because we got to get out that door. Where are the bodies? Easy. In all the kingdom of the living, there is no more deadly or voracious creature than the praying man. You think you'll be able to drive it out to sea? I hope so. Every device of military science, every defensive weapon, radar, plane, rocket, marshaled to destroy a thousand units, a monster leading a trail of carnage, spreading panic across a continent, Nothing in its path was safe. Not the planes in the sky. Not the ships at sea. Not the vehicles. Nor the vehicles on the ground. You boys might just as well go back. There aren't any bodies. And then this most dangerous monster that ever lived challenged the security of our city. Crack 
Air Force test pilot flies the world's newest experimental plane faster than sound. Faster than time itself. Beyond the time barrier. Hello, Allison. This is Martin. Do you read me, kid? Come in, Sands Control. Position 18, speed 10,000 plus. Position 20, airspeed increasing. I think something's wrong. 64 years into the terrifying future. A beautiful, horrible cave world you've never dreamed of. A beautiful girl and love. Mankind was made sterile in a great cosmic plague. A new Adam and Eve are the only male and female left to repopulate the world. I value my freedom more than this. So you will attempt this escape even though we try and stop you? Yes. The jealousy of a she-devil frees the bloodthirsty killer slaves. Follow me, soldiers of revenge. I'll lead you to the captain, to food, to freedom. <laughs> the last survivors of the human race are doomed to murder in a killer orgy by vicious subhuman mutants. Will you die 64 years from today? We challenge you to see the most terrifying picture ever made. See the picture of your life or death. Beyond the time barrier. Love beyond your wildest dreams. Adventure more daring than this earth has ever seen. If you have courage beyond the average, see Beyond the Time Barrier. Time 719. An unidentified object was picked up 200 miles southwest of Point Barrow, Alaska. Height, 75,000 feet. Estimated speed, 5,000 miles per hour. White warning. 754, first interceptor flight airborne. Point of interception, 80 miles due west of San Francisco, California. 755, unidentified object past point of interception. Red warning. This is the account of a handful of people who in the course of one desperate night fought off an unknown, unseen menace from another world. Doubly terrifying because it was invisible. Is that you, Doctor? <laughs> from Mars. He saw them land from outer space. He saw them capture innocent people only to destroy. <laughs> Father turned against son. People changed into strange, weird animals. A general of the army becomes a saboteur. The police turned into arsonists. The boy's parents changed into killers. But nobody's getting anywhere out there. Nobody can locate anything. Anybody. The Martians. We've got to stop them. Invaders from Mars. Capturing humans at will for their own sinister purposes turning them into diabolical instruments of destruction. <laughs> In 
invaders from Mars. We're fantastic beings of a super intelligence, ruling a race of synthetic humans and pitting them against mankind's dream to conquer the universe. Could be the beginning of the end for the human race. For what men first thought were meteors or the often ridiculed flying saucers are in reality the flaming vanguard of the invasion from Mars. Looks like they're gonna come out of that gully pretty soon. We'll have to rush our defenses to be ready when they do. This guy can need plenty of reinforcements. We'll get them. Lieutenant! Look! They slash across country like scythes wiping out everything that's trying to get away from them. That explains why communication is cut the moment their machines begin moving. Montreal's blacked out. Nothing more has come through. Same thing that happened on the Pacific Coast. Anything from them yet? No, Mr. Secretary. We've had nothing from San Francisco for over five hours. The nations of the world mobilize their armed might, rushing to defend the Earth against the unknown weapon of the super race from the Red Planet. Is there nothing that can stop the Martian death machines? Tanks, bombs, they're like toys against them. We know now that we can't beat their machines. We've got to beat them. All over the world, human beings cower before the onslaught of these unearthly enemies, whom no one has ever seen. <coughs> Panic that sweeps around the globe as the great masses of mankind flee blindly in a headlong stampede of hysteria. Never before was science so determined. From the deeps of the Caribbean to the underwater jungles of the Everglades, they baited their traps and gambled their lives to put a daring dream to the test. Gentlemen, the creature can be changed. We can make the giant step and bring a new species into existence. Here was the grimmest cargo ever to reach civilization. Was this a new being created by a miracle of science? They are burned away the outer scale. There's a structure of human skin underneath it. Or was this a beast made even more frightful by a mortal mind, more powerful by human emotion? The skills may grow back. Never. Features of skin, they're more like a human's every day.
not arguing theory, General. I'm here to ask you, to beg you, to save your own world. Is it the most fascinating mastermind man can conceive? A monster that can control all sources of the Earth's power, able to pull man-made spaceships from their orbits, making of those it chooses slaves. Of this woman, a willing handmaiden. Of the chief of police, a cold-blooded killer. Well, I've known you for five years. You just killed a man in cold blood. Why? I'll have to place you under protective custody. Peter Graves, the scientist who fought it. Beverly Garland, who believed her love stronger than it. Lee Van Cleef, whose brilliant mind was captured by it. Are you really ready to stop loving me? I'll need you even when no emotion exists. For a few dollars, you can, you can hire a woman who'll fit all your fetishes. She'll match your requirements perfectly. Then if you ever get tired of her, you can always run down to the employment agency for another. You'll know terror to freeze your blood. You'll feel the heart-stopping strength of the most fearful monster ever known. You think you're going to make a slave of the world? I'll see you in hell first. It conquered the world. BC. To reach this lost civilization, science had followed a trail through burning desert sands, through the roaring avalanches of Mount Kuitara, and finally deep into the bowels of the earth. Not even history had recorded the existence of this unknown empire of darkness. There is no world beyond ours. If I ever get out of here, into my world. The world of light and flowers. Will you come with me? Never before had outsiders beheld such sights. The sacred ritual of the sun death. The blazing sacrificial chambers. The court of the all-powerful high priest of Ishtar. You will die in the fire of Ishtar. The blood-lusting mole people storming from their subterranean caverns. Chester Morris, Marla English, Kathy Downs, Lance Fuller, Tom Conway, Frida Innescourt, and Ron Randall. It's an adventure into the occult, such as few people have known, and only those who see it can believe. You're not going for that supernatural hokum of his. I don't really know what I'm going for. I know he's a killer. And now you are traveling back through time and space. Farther, farther back. Back. Under his spell, she was both herself and another being, the she-creature seeking life sustenance from the stolen heartbeats of others. She was a woman born to be loved, and two men wanted her. One, a man whose powerful mad mind controlled her every reflex except her love. No! The other, willing to fight any odds for her love. You've been living in shadows. 
I want to bring you back to life. Society dances to hide the hysterical terror caused by their sudden intimacy with death. Forever closer comes the she-creature. You'll never forget the she-creature. I've had about enough of this. Please, Cooper. How many more young lives are you going to drain to keep this senseless brute alive? You know, I could swear I heard the sound of a heartbeat. Stay away. Get out of here, Rogers. Tell me about it. I'm a doctor. Maybe I can help you. Nobody can help me. Existence as a menace to the project. So you decided to let me die? Yes. 220 years. Too long for any man to live. which crashed into the Mediterranean Sea on the 11th was a single-stage, astral-propelled rocket launched 13 months ago from a site within the United States. The rocket, with its complement of 17 men, had landed on the planet Venus. Venus? The planet Venus? Some of you may also have heard the story of a monster now confined here in Rome Zoo. That beast is from Venus. German scientist, Russian soldier, Chinese peasant girl, will be given the power to destroy every human being on Earth. What will they do? What will their governments force them to do? What would you do? Each of the capsules has a diameter of lethal radiation, which is exactly 3,000 miles. There is then, in the combined capsules, more than enough power to wipe out all human life on your planet. <laughs> I am an alien from outer space. Don't say anything. I thought you'd never make it. 
How long are we going to stay here just hiding like hunted animals? You don't think I like hiding, do you? We've been here ten days. We've managed to disagree on every one of them. Actually, we've had all the disadvantages of marriage without any of the advantages. Jonathan, stop. But it's true. It's time I went to bed. Demand is hereby made for the immediate withdrawal of all American forces and civilians on land, sea, and air to within the limits of continental United States on pain of total war. Every human being alive will die unless science solves the riddle of the destruction capsules from outer space before the 27th day. Answer me, Klaus. Where are they? I've launched them. Soon the world will be ours. An upheaval of nature tears loose a creature out of the nightmare of time. Spawned by an earthquake on the bed of the ocean, a reptilian, earth-shaking beast of the sea. The monster that challenged the world. My tank. My tank. What's wrong? Blake's tank is caught in the underground. Died right in front of me. I couldn't help him. I'm gonna go back. Talk sense. What's down there? I don't know. I never saw anything like it before. It's the size of a dinosaur and ten times more terrifying. Hurling the horrors of the unknown at every living thing. vengeance, born in the heart of a man unjustly condemned to death. In death I shall be stronger than you in life. I will come back from hell and make you pay for your crimes. Tree monster. Oh, now, Norgu, I know about cannibalistic flowers, but this tree monster is utterly unbelievable. Dr. Mason, you are a wise lady. But there are many things even the wisest of us do not know. Land of superstition, terror, and violent hatred. <laughs> Where beneath the surface of the Polynesian Islands, the Earth gives grotesque and terrible birth to a monstrous creature, sworn to kill and torture and destroy. I beg you, pull up the roots so it will die before it murders everyone. You know what? I have an eerie feeling that this thing knows what we're saying. That pulse beat is almost human. Don't be stingy at a time like this, dear. Relentlessly, the Baranga pursues its prey. <laughs> Impervious to destruction by mortal hands, ravaging the world in its madness. <laughs> We've got to find her. Let's go back. Come on. Those bullets bounce off like BB shot on a stone wall. <laughs> 